What is going on, guys? We are back playing some more Surviving with Batania, and today we're going to be going over the Portal to Alfheim. Now, the Portal to Alfheim is an extremely important multi block structure when it comes to progressing with Batania, mainly because there are a lot of very useful blocks that are gated behind setting it up. And the reason they're gated behind that is because a lot of crafting materials for those blocks are going to require elven trade to get. Now, for those of you that do not know what elven trade is, it's the process of tossing an item into the portal to Alfheim, expending a little bit of mana, and out comes the elven version. And a perfect example of that is going to be pixie dust right here. This is one of the many things that you'll be trading for, and you're going to get this simply by tossing a mana pearl into the portal to Alfheim, which is what's actually being depicted right here. And after giving up a little bit of mana, out comes your pixie dust. Now there's a ton of different things like this and there's a lot of very useful blocks that you will make from it. So the goal today is to get this set up very early on in the series, which I know might seem a little bit unconventional to people, but then every setup we make in the future can be fully optimized using these useful blocks because a lot of times they're going to make them simpler to do more efficient and all around a better setup so you might as well get this done early to make everything its best version right away rather than making slightly worse versions and then going back later and upgrading them once you have access to all these blocks Along with going over how to set up the portal to Alfheim, we're also going to be going over how to make Terra Steel at the beginning of today's episode, simply because it's going to require exactly one Terra Steel ingot to make a couple of the components necessary to get the portal up and running. So here are all the items we're going to need for today's episode. You can feel free to pause the video and make sure you have all the necessary items if you want to follow along, but we should be good to grab all of these out and start doing some crafting. Okay, so the crafting should be done for now. There's going to be a little bit more we have to do once we make our first piece of Terra Steel, like I mentioned earlier. But obviously, the first thing we need to do is get the multi block setup done so that we can make the piece of Terra Steel so that we can finish progressing. So, to make the Terra Steel, we need to use four Lapis Lazuli blocks, five Living Rock, and the Terrestrial Agglomeration Plate. I have no idea if I'm saying that name right, it's a super long one, but let's just pretend I'm saying it right and start putting this to good use. So we're going to want to clear out a 3x3 three three area, and I'm going to do it right over here by our mana generation setup because this is going to be a relatively large mana hog, as you will see. Then we're going to place down Living Rock in the four corners and right in the center. And then we're going to fill in the other four blocks with Lapis Lazuli. Then finally, the Terrestrial Agglomeration Plate is going to go over the center Living Rock block. And this is the multi-block needed to make Terra Steel. So now that we have the multi-block set up, we need to worry about transferring mana to this. Because as I mentioned a little bit ago, this thing is a mana hog. It's going to take per Terra Steel about half a mana pool of mana. So if we take a look at how much I have over here right now, I should have a sufficient amount, but it's definitely going to drain majority of the mana that I have access to which is one of the reasons you're not going to be making a ton of Terra Steel really early on. But like I said, it's only going to take one, so we should be okay. And the way we're going to transfer the mana is using Sparks. And these are going to be the most efficient way to get mana to this. They're extremely useful for a lot of different reasons, but the basics of it is you're going to link two Sparks together. In this case, we're going to put one on top of our mana pool. We're going to put one on top of our plate. And now whenever this plate needs mana because it wants to make Terra Steel, it's going to pull mana from a linked spark that's over a mana source. So in this case, we can make sure they're linked. We can see the line between them when we right click on it, which means this one will be good to pull mana the minute we put the items down on the plate right here. Now the mana transfer is going to take a fair bit of time even when using sparks to bring it from the mana pool to the plate just because there is so much mana that's required per piece of terra steel that we're making. So an important thing to know is that once you've thrown down your mana pearl, mana steel ingot, and mana diamond and the process begins, you cannot pick any of these up. If you do, the process will stop and any mana that you've put into it at that point will be voided. So if you're like me, 
and you don't have a ton of mana to go around, well then you really need to make sure that you're not losing out on it because even if you're half a second from the Terra Steel being made, you're gonna lose out on almost half a mana pool of mana and you're gonna have to start over again. So just try to make sure that you are as far away from this as possible so that you're not going to pick any of these items up accidentally unless you got a lot of mana to throw around willy nilly and you wanna live on the edge. So I'm gonna start the process. We're gonna to toss these down from a safe distance onto the plate. And then this very cool particle effect light show is going to start. It starts out blue and then it's gonna turn green. It is a relatively lengthy one, so you better be ready to sit around for a little bit. And we can see the mana is being transferred. It's a lot quieter than using the mana spreaders, which is pretty nice, but I think it should be finishing up here in one more, I don't know what you'd call that, one more cycle while these come back in. And there we go. We have our Terra Steel ingot. We are good to walk in, pick it up, and we can take a look at, oh my God, where did all the mana go? It is so sad to see that since that's, that's pretty much my stockpile of mana other than my mana tablet, which is pretty full in my inventory. But now we are good to finish off the remaining crafting for today's episode. Okay, so now I can officially say the crafting is done for today's episode. We just needed to make a couple additional things, and it expended, like I said, our entire Terra Steel ingots, since each of the three things we needed to craft used three Terra Steel nuggets, which I guess works out really nicely because it takes a lot of mana to make one ingot, and if you had to make two, well then, we might not be having this episode right now. But either way, we are good to start setting up the portal to Alfheim, and we're going to start by placing down the Elven Gateway Core at the center base of where we want the set up to be. Now we're going to use living wood on each side of this and each side is going to be three long and it's going to encase a three by three area. So on this side then we're going to do living wood, glimmering living wood, and another piece of living wood. Up here living wood, glimmering living wood, living wood again. Same thing on this side and here we go. So this is exactly what the outline or the frame to the portal to Alfheim is going to look like. The problem is we can't open up the portal and do anything with it unless we supply it with mana. And that's where the next important step comes in using the mana pools and the pylons we just made. So the mana pools and pylons can be anywhere within an 11 by 11 by 11 area around the portal, but I think they look best when they're sitting pretty much right in front of it. So I'm gonna put one right here and then because it needs to be totally symmetrical, we'll put one right there. And then we're just gonna put the pylons if we can properly place them on top of these, which I guess I can't apparently. There we go. I put down one correctly. Now we gotta get this one back and do it over here. There we go. Okay, so we're gonna put a pylon down on top of each mana pool, and these are going to allow mana from the mana pools to be transferred to the gateway core. Now to open this portal, it's going to take 200,000 mana, and I know we usually don't talk in raw numbers here, so let me give it a little bit of context for you guys. Each mana pool is going to hold 1 million mana, obviously because we have two mana pools that are going to equally transfer to the gateway core when we open it. That means we're going to be using 100,000 mana from each mana pool, so roughly 10%. So it is going to take a fair bit of mana, but really when you're filling these up, you only need to get them up to about, I'd say probably 25%. So the first tick when you're looking at it with your wand of the forest to feel comfortable that you're going to be able to open the portal and make enough item trades. And I'm gonna do that using a mana tablet real quick. I'm just gonna chuck it down on top of these if I can sneak it under there and I'm gonna allow it to transfer the appropriate amount of mana into each one. And then we'll be good to open this up. So it seems the mana transfer is complete. You can see I managed to get each one of these up to pretty much exactly 25% full. And unfortunately, my mana tablet is totally empty. I even had to go refill it over there partway through because it didn't have enough in it to complete these. But we should be good now to open up the portal to Alfheim. And once you have your mana appropriately in the mana pools and you got everything set up like this, all you're gonna do is right click on the Elven Gateway Core using a Wand of the Forest, and there we go. Now, even if you have no mana, you're going to initially get a little bit of a green portal showing when you try to open it, but it's only going to stay open if you have that appropriate 200,000 mana ready to expend to this whenever you try to open it. Now, the nice thing is it no longer takes mana to stay open. It's going to take mana per operation when we throw items in it. 
Back when I recorded this series before, way, way back when, like six years ago, I believe it required mana consistently to stay open, which made it a lot harder to open up early game. And people actually did out mathematical calculations to determine if it was more efficient to leave it open constantly or if it would be better to close it and then reopen it whenever you needed it. Now, if we take a look at these, you can see that it expended about 10% and it'll stay like that until we start throwing items in here. And the first and only item we're going to do in today's episode, and this should be the first one you throw in, is your Lexica Batania because it's going to get a little bit more information added to it once we throw it in and the people on the other side of this portal are nice enough to give it back so we're just going to toss it in there and wow they were pretty quick about that nice turnaround time but we now have the lexica botania that looks a little bit nicer than before because i guess throwing it in there fixed the texture glitch so i guess those guys on the other side are pretty tech savvy because they managed to fix it from the very ominous black book to this nice green and gold book and if we open this there's a lot of new information in here but the big one is on this tab right here you can see that there is some new info on the portal to alfheim so there's a lot more stuff to unlock with this that we can go over but now we have access to elven trade which means we can start making some very cool builds in the future one that comes to mind is going to be an infinite mana generating tree farm, which we'll probably go over next episode. And it's going to be a more efficient version than people tend to set up because it's going to make use of some elven trade items. So I think that's going to wrap it up for today, guys. If you enjoyed today's episode, be sure to subscribe so you never miss out on a future episode, which come out every Monday and Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I will talk to you guys later.